hello viewers welcome to philomatic series in today's video we are going to be looking at a detailed solution of 2024 YEC mathematics theory and if you are new to this channel you can consider liking this video and also subscribing share to your friends too question one says the time taken to buy fuel at a fuel station varies directly as the number of vehicles in a queue and varies inversely as the number of pumps P available at the station. In a station with five pumps, it takes 10 minutes to fill 20 vehicles. Find the relationship T, P, and V. So we are told that the time, let's call it T, taken to buy fuel in a gas station varies directly as the number of vehicles V and inversely as the number of pumps P. And so if we introduce the constant of proportionality, we we'll have K. V over P. This is the relationship. And so we are told that in a station with five pumps, it takes 10 minutes to fill 20 vehicles. So T is 10. K vehicles 20. And P is 5. So 5 can go into 24 times. And 4 can go into 10 two and a half times which is 2.5 so k is 2.5 or 5 over 2 so that our relationship between t p and v will be 5 v over 2 p b says time it takes to fill 50 vehicles at the station with two pumps so we're looking for time. First of all, put the relationship. Time is 5V over 2P. 50 vehicles will be 5 times 50 over 2 pumps, 2 times 2. 2 can go into 50 25 times. And 5 times 25 is 125. So time is 1, 2, 5 over 2, which is 62.5 minutes or 1 hour, 2 minutes, 0 0.5 minutes is 30 seconds. C says, find the number of pumps required to fill 40 vehicles in 20 minutes. So we're looking for P. So if we make P the sort of formula here, we'll have from T equals 5V over 2P. We'll make P the sort of formula. This will come here. This will go here. We'll have P will be 5V over 2T. So for how many vehicles? 40 vehicles. 5 times 40 over for 20 minutes, 20. 20 can go into 40 two times. 2 can cancel 2. So the number of pumps will be 5. Question 2 says, a car traveled a distance of 2S plus 13 kilometers at 67.5 km per hour and 5s minus 20 km at 72 km per hour. If the total time for the entire journey was 10 minutes, find the value of x. So, mind you, our speed is given in per hour. So, we need to convert this 90 minutes to an hour. The first thing we recall is the formula for speed speed is distance over time because we are giving the total time for the entire journey as 90 minutes 
we're going to find the formula for time. From here, we know that time is distance over speed. So, the first time is the distance was 2x plus 13 kilometer and the speed was 67.5 and the second time the speed was the distance was 5x minus 20 over 72 and so the 90 minutes is equivalent to 90 over 60 in hours which is 3 over 2 so since the total time is 90 minutes which is 3 over 2 we have that t1 plus t2 have to give 3 over 2 what is our t1 2x plus 13 over 67.5 is 135 over 2 plus 5x minus 20 over 72 equals 3 over 2. So I can take this one upward to how to multiply this we have 4x plus 26 over 135 plus 5x minus 20 over 72 because 3 over 2. Now, what's the LCM? The LCM between these three is 1080. And so we are going to multiply through by 1080. So 1080 multiply. 4x plus 26 over 135. 1080 multiply 5x minus 20 over 72. And 1080 multiply 3 over 2. 135 can go 1080 8 times. And so if we multiply 8 times, 4 is 32x. 8 times 26 is 208. 72 going to 1080 is 15 times. And 15 times 5 is 75x. 15 times 20 is 300. 2 can go into 1080 as. And 540 times 3 is. 1620. And so, if we collect like terms, 32x plus 75x will give 107x. 208 minus 300 is minus 92 equals 1620. Add 92 to both sides, we'll have 107x equals 1620 plus 92. And we'll have 107s equals this will give 1. 7 12 divided by 107 we we'll have x to be 16. Question 3 says a circular floor of a building is to be tied with ceramic ties each of side 40 cm by 40 cm. The perimeter of the floor is 66 meters. Calculate correct to the nearest whole number, the number of ties required to complete, completely tie the floor. Now, what's going on here? So, we have a circular floor that we want to put ties on. So, we need to know the number of ties that will be needed to tie that floor. How do we get that? We first of all look for the area of the circular floor and the area of ties. 
And so if we divide the area of the circular floor by the area of ties, that will give us the number of ties required to tie the circular floor. Now, solution. So if this is circular floor and the circumference or the perimeter is 66 meters, we can get what the radius is. Remember that perimeter equals 2 pi arrow and we are giving it as 66 2 times 22 over 7 and our radius is what we are looking for. 22 can cancel 66 3 times and so our radius will be 7 times 3 which is 21 over 2 which is 10.5 so we have gotten the radius of the circular floor the next thing we want to do is to find the area of the circular floor so area of circular floor of course we know is pi arrow square which is 22 over 7 times 10.5 square 346.5 meter square so this is meter so the next thing we want to do is to find the area of the ties the ties is 40 cm by 40 cm so area of ties we would like to convert it to meters and to convert cm to meters we divide by 100 remember area is length times breadth and so to be 40 over 100 times 40 over 100 so zero cancel zero so we have 16 over 100 which is 0 0.16 meters therefore number of ties needed will be area of circular flow over area of ties so area of circular flow we got as 346.5 and area of ties we got as 0 0.16 and if we divide we get 2165.625 we are asked to approximate it to the nearest whole number, approximately 2166, because this is up to 5. We we'll round it up. So we need 2166 number of ties to tie the circular floor. Question 4 says in the diagram, ABCD is a circle of center O. The quadrilateral OBCD is a rhombus such that angle ADO equals angle. OBA equals Y and angle BAD equals T. Find the value of T. Now, I've done a holistic work on circle theorem. Check my playlist on circle theorem and you will see all the theorems there. How do we get T? We know from circle theorem that the angle at center is twice as circumference. So it means if here is T, here is 2T. Angle B O D equals 2T. The reason angle at center twice angle at circumference. And so what about this? We know that opposite angle of a cyclic quad is supplementary. So here is 2t. 
Since we are told that BODC is a rhombus, we know from properties of rhombus that the opposite angles are equal. So if here is 2t, here is also 2t. And let's call here x. And let's call here x. If here is x, here will be s because opposite angles of rhombus are equal. How do we get t now? We know that the opposite angles of a cyclic word are supplementary. That is, angle B A D plus angle B C D must give 180. So, which is T plus 2T equals 180. 3T equals 180. Divide both sides by 3. T will be 60 degrees. Now, how do we find the value of y? Next thing we are going to look for is the value of y. But before we look for the value of y, let's look for what s is. How do we get s? The sum of a quadrilateral is 360. And so, since we have gotten what t is, t is 60, it means here will be 2 times 60, 120, here will be 120. So it means x plus 120 plus 120 plus x equals 360. Sum of angles in a quad. And so we have 2x plus 240 equals 360. Subtract 240 from both sides. We have 2x equals 360 minus 2x. 240. So 2x will be 360 minus 240 is 120. Divide both sides by 2. We have that x is 60. So x is 60 degree. If x is 60 degree, how do we find what y is? We are going to use the fact that the opposite angles of a cyclic word are supplementary. That means this must equal this plus this must equal 180. What we have got to what s is s is 60. That means 60 plus y plus 60 plus y must give 180. 60 plus y plus 60 plus y must give 180. The reason is opposite angles of a cyclic chord they are supplementary so this is 2y this is 120 if i subtract 120 from both sides i'll have one i'll have 60 so i have 2y equals 60 y equals 30 degrees now finally what is angle ADC? Angle ADC. It will be X plus Y. Angle ADC is X plus Y. What is our X? X is 60 and Y is 30 degrees. So this will give us 90 degrees. Question 5 is probability. It says a basket contains three gold plated marbles, four diamond marbles, and some silver marbles, all of the same size and shape. Two marbles were drawn from the basket at random, one after the other, without replacement. If the probability that the two marbles were all silver is 1 over 15, find the number of silver marbles. I mean, probability is an interesting topic. So, solution. Remember that the def probability of silver marbles will be number of silver marbles over total outcome. So we don't know how many silver marbles are inside. Let's start by saying, let 
the number of silver marbles be x and so the next thing we like to do is to find the total marbles in this basket so the total marbles will be 3 plus 4 plus x which is 7 plus x and so the probability of picking a silver marble so probability of silver marble for the first time the number of silver marble inside will be x over 7 plus x times the second time the silver marble has decreased by 1 and the total outcome have decreased by 1 too so silver marble will be x minus 1 over so 7 plus x minus 1 will be 6 plus x the total that it is 1 over 15 so if i multiply i'll have x bracket x minus 1 over x plus 7 x plus 6 equals 1 over 15 because 7 plus x is same as x plus 7 so if we open the bracket we have x square minus x over this will have x square plus 6x plus 7x plus 7 times 6 is 42 equals 1 over 15. So for some this will have x square minus x over x square. This is 13x plus 42 equals 1 over 15. We we'll cross multiply, we we'll have 15 x square minus 15x equals x square plus 13x plus 42. So we we'll collect like terms. 15x square minus x square is 14x square minus 15x minus 13x will be minus 28x and minus 42 equals 0. We look at the left hand side we we'll notice that 14 is common so if we divide through by 14 we'll have x square minus 2x minus 3 equals 0 we can factorize these two numbers that we can multiply to get minus 3 and what we we'll add it to get minus 2 will be 3 minus 3 and 1. So because the coefficient here is unity, we have x minus 3, x plus 1 equals 0. So if you equate them to 0, because either this or this equal to 0. So either x minus 3 equals 0 or x plus 1 equals 0. So that x will be or minus one but mind you we are looking for the number of silver marbles we cannot have number as negative therefore number of silver marbles is three question c says given that x plus two 4x plus 3 and 7x plus 24 are consecutive terms of a geometric progression. Find the value of x. You know that if we have a geometric progression, they differ from one another by a common ratio. And how do we find the common ratio? The common ratio can be gotten by either the second term divided by the first term or the third term divided by the second term. This is how we use to find what S is. So, we know that R is 4x plus 3 over x plus 2. It's also the same as 7x plus 24 over 4x plus 2, 3. So, we can cross multiply. 
we have 4x plus 3 all square equals x plus 2, 7x plus 24. So if we square this, we have 4x square is 16x square. 2 times 4x times 3 is 24x. 3 square is 9. x times 7x is 7x square. x times 24 is 24x. 2 times 7s is 14s. 2 times 24 is 48. This 24s can go with this 24s. 16s square minus 7x square is 9x square. And if we take this here, we have minus 14x. And so we're left with 9 minus 48 is minus 39 equals 0. So we look for two numbers such that when we multiply it, now we multiply 9 times 39. 9 times 39 is 351. We look for two numbers such that when we multiply it, we'll get 351. And when we add it, we'll get minus 14x. Those two numbers will be minus 27 and 13 yes minus 27 and 13 because if we multiply this we'll get minus 351 and if we add it together we'll get minus 14s so in place of 14s we'll replace it 9, 9x square minus 27x plus 13x minus 39 equals 0 so 9s is common here, 9x, x minus here is 3, 13 is common here, 13 here is x, into here is 3, equals 0. So that we have, we factorize x minus 3 out, we'll be left with 9x plus 13. And so either this or this is equal to 0. So x minus 3 is equal to 0 or 9x plus 13 is equal to 0. So that x will be 3 or minus 13 over 9. The second question says, find the common ratio. Since we have gotten what s is, we can substitute what s is into this and then find the common ratio. The common ratio will be 2. since we have two terms for s. So, if x equals 3, the consecutive terms will be, the gp will be 3 plus 2, 4, 3 plus 3, and 7 times 3 plus 24. This is which is 5, 12 plus 3, 15, 21 plus 24, 45. So these are the three terms. And so the common ratio, the common ratio when S is 3, will be 15 over 5, which is 3. But if x is minus 13 over 9, if we substitute it inside, the 3 gp will be minus 13 over 9 plus 2, comma, 4 times minus 13 over 9 plus 3, comma 7 times minus 13 over 9 plus 24 so if we sum this we we'll have 5 over 9 this is minus 25 over 9 and the third term will be 
125 over 9. And so if it is this case, the common ratio will be minus 25 over 9 divided by 5 over 9, which is minus 25 over 9 times 9 over 5. Now I cancel this. 5 into minus 25 is minus 5. So the common ratio is either 3 or minus 5. Question 7 says, the table shows the ages of 20 children in a household. Given that the ratio of x to y is 1 to, is to 2, find the values of x and y. Now, from this ratio, x is to y is same as x over y equals 1 over 2. And if we cross multiply, we have 2x equals y. And if we bring it to the left hand side, we have 2x minus y equals 0. Let's call this equation 1. And from this, since the total number of children is 20, it means if we sum the frequency, they should give 20. So 2 plus 2x minus 1 plus y plus 2 plus 4 plus 2 plus y minus 1 should give 20. And so 2 minus 1 minus 1 is gone. We have 2x we have 2x y plus y plus 2y and we are left with 2 plus 4, 6 plus 2, 8 and if we take it to the left hand side to the right hand side, 20 minus 8 is 12. So this is equation 2. And so, if we eliminate S, we can say equation 2 minus 1. So this will go 2S, 2Y minus minus Y is 3Y, and 12 minus 0 is 12. So that divide both sides by 3, Y is 4. From equation 1, 2x minus y is 0. y we have gotten as 4. 2x minus 4 is 0. 2x equals 4. Divide both sides by 2. We have gotten that x is 2. Now, we are asked to look for the mean age of the children. So, since we have gotten what x and y is, we can easily replace it here. And if we rewrite this, we'll have age frequency. So for 5, we have 2. For 6, we have 2x minus 1, where s is 2. That is 4 minus 1 is 3. For 7, we have y plus 2. y is 4. And 4 plus 2 is 6. For 8, we have 4. For 9, we have 2. And for 10, y minus 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. So this is our new frequency table. So this is like x. This is f. And so for us to get the mean, we need fs. So f. Multiplying x, we will need this. Five times two is ten. Six times three is eighteen. Seven times six is forty-two. Eight times four is thirty-two. Nine times two is eighteen. Ten times three is thirty. So we know that the mean is summation of fx over summation of f. Summation of fs will be the sum of this, which is 10 plus 18 plus 42 
plus 32 plus 18 plus 30 over the total number, which is 20. We can easily add this up. 18 plus 42 is 60 plus 10 is 70 plus 30 is 100 plus 50 is 150. So we have 150 over 20. Zero can cancel zero. 2 divided 15 is 7.5. So the mean age is 7.5 years. Question 8 says, two observers, Abu and Babu, 46 meters apart, observe a bird on a vertical pole from the same horizontal or from, from the same side of the bird. The angles of elevation of the bird from Abu's and Babu's eye are 40 degrees and 48 degrees, respectively. If at the foot of the pole, Abu and Babu are on the same horizontal, illustrate the information in a diagram. This is an interesting question. So, if this is the pole, and this is the eye level of Abu and Babu, This is the eye level. For Abu, the angle for Abu is 40 degrees. So you believe 40 degrees will be further. So this is Abu's eye level. 40 degrees. And for Babu, Babu is 48 degrees. 48 degrees will be closer. So this is the eye level. The distance apart from Abu and Babu is 46 meter. So this is 46 meter. Let me finish the horizontal. So this is the horizontal ground. So this is the diagram that illustrates this information. B say calculate correct to one decimal place the height of the pole. B says calculate correct to one decimal place the height of the pole. Let's call the whole height of the pole H, which is from here to here, and this height, small h, from here to here. Let's call here x. So this place, let's call it x, so that h plus x is big h. But at the end of the day, since they did not give us the height of Abu and Babu, their height is negligible. Otherwise, they would have given us. But if you are in doubt that their height is not negligible, at the end of the day, I will prove to you that x is zero. So we are going to solve ignoring this their height, solve with this. So if here is for the CCM, let's call the whole of this y. If here is y, from here to here will be y minus 46. So we can find h by using trigonometric ratio tan. We know that tan theta is opposite over adjacent. So tan 48 degrees will be h over y minus 46. If we make h the sort of formula, H will be y minus 46 than 48 degrees. So if we use the whole triangle, the larger triangle, 
we can use star 40. And 40 degrees. Opposite is H. And the adjacent is Y. The whole of this is Y. So, H over Y. So that H is Y and 40 degrees. These two are H, so they have to be equal. Since we are looking for H. So, Y minus 46 and 48 degrees have to equal Y and 40 degrees. We can open the bracket. We have Y and 48 degrees minus 46 and 40 8 degrees equals to y tan 40 degrees. Color like terms, the ones that have y, bring it to the left to have y bracket tan 48 degrees minus tan 40 degrees. We we'll take this to the right, becomes 46 tan 48 degrees. Y will give us 46 tan 48 degrees over than 48 degrees minus than 40 degrees. And if we do this, we will get 188.16 meter. But we are looking for what H is. Now, H will now be 188.16 than 40. If we do this, we will have One fifty seven point eight eight approximately one fifty seven point nine to one decimal place meter. So, so let's prove that this X is zero. If I extend this to get the you know that if here is 40, here is 40 by corresponding angles. Let me call here Z. And so here is TS. By similar triangle, we can take the height of this small triangle to the height of the big triangle and the length of the base to the length of the big base, which will give us in head, which I've gotten at 157, 157.9 over 157.9 plus x, x plus 157.9 equals the length of this. The length of this whole thing is y, and we got y as 188.16 over the length of the whole of this is y plus z 188.16 plus z well we can we can write z in terms of x because from here tan 40 is s over z and so z is x over tan 40. x over tan 40 is 1.191x. That is z. So if I replace this with this, we'll have 157.9 over x plus 157.9 equals 188.16 over 188.16 plus 1. 191x. If I cross multiply, this multiply this, I have 29710.4 plus 188.1x equals, if I multiply this, I have 188.16s plus, if I multiply this, I have 29710.4. This can go with this, and if we subtract this, 
we have minus 0 0.06s equals 0. So that x is 0. So indeed, x is negligible. Question 9 says, the diameter of a circle center O is 26 cm. If a chord PQ is drawn such that it is 5 cm from O to the center of the circle of the chord, calculate correct to the nearest whole number, the angle POQ. So if this is the center, and so the diameter of a circle, and this is the chord, from here to here is the radius, and from here to here is the radius. So if the diameter is 26, the radius is half the diameter. So radius is 26 over 2, which is 13 cm. So here is 13 cm. And we are told that if a chord PQ, a chord PQ, here is O, is drawn such that it is 5 cm from O, so this is 5 cm, to the center of the chord, calculate correct to the nearest whole number, the angle POQ. So we are looking for this angle, POQ. To find this angle, we use three ratios. Let this angle be theta, just this. And of course, this is also theta. So, cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, we know. And so, cos theta will be adjacent is 5, hypotenuse is 13. So, theta will be cos inverse of 5 over 13, which is 67.38. So, therefore, angle P O Q is twice 67.38 which is 134.76 degree approximately to the nearest whole number 135 degrees b says find the area of the minor segment formed by the chord pq so we're looking for this area So for us to get this area of minus segment, it will be area of the sector minus area of this triangle. So area of minus segment is area of sector minus area of triangle. And so, what is the formula? Area of sector is theta over 360 times pi r square. Area of triangle is, when we know two sides and an included angle, the formula is half r square sine theta. So, in order to save time, we can factorize r square out. So, this is r square bracket theta over 360 minus 1 over 2 sine theta. And so arrow square, arrow is given as 13. So this is 13 square. Pi is 22. Theta is 135 over 7 times 360 minus 1 over 2 sine 135. 13 square is 169. And so 45 can go here 3 times. 45 can go here 8 times. 2 can go here 11. 2 can go here 4. So that we have 33 over 28 minus 1 over 2 root 2 over 2. So this will be 169. The LCM is 28. So 33 minus 20, 4 into 28 is 7. And so 7 root 2 over 28. So if we simplify this, we will get 139.428. Approximately one thirty nine centimeter square.
That is the area of the minor segment. Then question 10 says, in a man's will, he gave two to fifth of the total acres of his cocoa farm to the wife and one third of what is left to the family. The rest of the farm was to be shared amongst his three children. The ratio of three is to five is to two. Given that the child who had the least share received eight acres, calculate the total acres the man left. Interesting question. So let's start by saying let the total acres be x. He gave two fifths of the total acres of his cocoa farm to the wife. So the wife received two over five times x, which is two x over five. And after receiving this, the it will be remaining x minus 2x over 5, which is 3x over 5. Next, one third of what is left, which is this, is given to the family. So the family will receive one third of what is left, which is 3x over 5 which is x over 5. And if they receive this, what will be remaining will be 3x over 5 minus x over 5, which is 2x over 5. Now, this is what will be remaining if one third of what was remaining before was given to the family. Now, we are not told that the rest of the farm was to be shared amongst his three children in the ratio of three is to five is to two. This is the rest of the farm. Given that the child who had the least share received eight acres, the child who has the least share is the one that have the least ratio, which is two. And the total ratio is three plus five plus two, which is 10. So child with least share will receive 2 over 10 times 2x over 5. They said he received 8. So from this, we can get what s is. 2 can cancel 10 5 times. 2 can cancel 8 4 times. And so we have x over 25 equals 4. So that x is 25 times 4 is 100 so the total acres of land is 100 acres so the number of acres the wife received remember the wife received two fifths of the acres will be two over five times 100 over one five here is 20 so the wife received 40 acres B says the list price of a television set is $1,600. It can be purchased by a deposit of $400 and the rest of the amount paid by 12 monthly installment at 25% per annum, simple interest. If the television set is purchased by installment, find the total cost. So, the first thing I want to write down is the deposit. The deposit is giving us $400. So after depositing $400, that means the list price of the television set, the balance will remain $1,600 minus $400, which is $1,200. Now, the rest of the amount, this is the rest of the amount, $1,200, was paid by 12 monthly installments at 25% per annum simple interest. So, the interest 
that was gotten from this was remember principal rate times time over 100 the principal is one two dollars the rate is 25 percent and the time is 12 months which is one year over 100 and if we times this we will get 300 dollars so this is the interest made for over 12 months therefore the total cost will be the initial deposit 400 plus the principal 1 2 plus the interest 300 and if we sum all of them together it will give us 1 5 1 9 $900. Question 11 says, find the equation of the line that passes through the origin and the point of intersection of the lines x plus 2y equals 7 and x minus y equals 4. So, x1, y1 is the origin. So, x2, y2 will be the solution to this simplest equation. So let's solve x plus 2y equals 7, x minus 2 minus y equals 4. This is 1, this is 2. So we will eliminate s by subtracting. So equation 1 minus equation 2. 2y minus minus y is 3y. 7 minus 4 is 3. Divide by 3, divide by 3, y is 1. And so what about x? From equation 2, x minus 1 equals 4. x is 4 plus 1, 5. So we have gotten x1, y1. Now x2, y2 is 5,1. The next thing we want to get is the slope. The slope m is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. y2 is 1 minus 0. x2 is 5 minus 0. So this will give me 1 over 5. And you recall that equation of a line passing through a point or two points. Passing through a point is giving us y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. So we can use y1 and x1 as the origin or this. Any of them will give us the same answer. So let's use the origin to make things easy for us. So y minus 0 equals m, which is 1 over 5, x minus 0. So if I multiply through by 5, I have 5y equals x. So I'll have 5y minus x equals 0. So this is the equation. V says the ratio of the interior angle to an exterior angle of a regular polygon is 4 is to 1. Find the number of sides. I, I say find the value of the exterior angle. And I, I, I says find the sum of the interior angles. So what I would like to do is to make things easy for me, I will solve 2 first. To make things easy for me, I will say let x equals the interior angle and y equals the exterior angle there is one interior and one exterior angle so we are told that the interior to the exterior is 4 is to 1 it means x over y interior to exterior is 4 is to 1 so that i'll have x is equal to 4y if i bring it here i'll have x minus 4y equals 0. Also, remember that the sum of interior plus exterior always give 180. So I know that x plus y interior plus interior is 180 degrees. So since I'm looking for one exterior angle, which is y, let me eliminate s by subtracting equation 2 minus equation 1. So if this is 2, this is 1, 
this is 2. So 2 minus 1. This minus this is gone. Y minus minus 4. Y is 5Y. This is 180. Divide by 5. Divide by 5. I have Y. So be 5 here is 3. Into 30 is 6. So Y is 36 degree. Which is one exterior angle. So I says find the number of sides. Remember, there is a formula that says one exterior angle is 360 over number of sides. And so to find the number of sides, n will be 360 over one exterior angle. So this will be 360. One exterior angle is 36. And this will give us 10, 10 sides. And finally, to find the sum of the interior angles, since we know the number of sides, the sum of interior angles is given as n minus 2 times 180 degrees. n is 10. It will be 10 minus 2 times 180 degrees, which is 8 times 180 degrees, which is 1, 4, Four, zero. Question 12 says, in the diagram, P arrow is a tangent to the circle center O. Angle POQ is 56 degree and PO intersect SQ at V such that angle SVP is 109 degrees. Calculate angle TQP. Angle TQP. So if we call here theta, Angle TQP, which is theta, we can see that angle TSO is half 56 because angle at center equals twice angle at circumference. Which is 28 degrees. So since here is 28 degrees. This angle here is 28 degrees. We call it angle in the alternate segment. Angle TQP, which is theta, is 28 degrees. The reason is angle in the alternate segment. II says find angle QTS. Let's look for what this angle is first. Because this is a red die and this is a red die, these two angles are equal. So I can call here X and call here. Call here X, the whole of here, X. So X plus X plus 56 equals 180. Sum of angle in a triangle. So 2X equals 180 minus 56. 2x equals 180 minus 56 is 124 divided by 2 so that x is 62 degrees. So since here is 62 degrees, you can get this by subtracting the sum of this and 28 from 180. So let's call here y. y plus 28 plus 109 equals 180. So y will be 180 minus 137 degrees. So that y is 43 degrees. Therefore, therefore, angle QTS is x plus y, which is 62 plus 43, which is 105 degrees. B says simplify this so we can factorize this. You multiply 2 by 2, we get 4. You look for two numbers such that when you multiply it, you get minus 4. When you add it, you get minus 3. Those two numbers will be minus 4 and plus 1. And so I can easily write it as n minus 4. Because there is a coefficient here which is not 1 which is 2, we divide by 2. 
n plus 1, the same thing, divide by 2, over, in this place, we do the same thing, we multiply 2 by 1, you have 2, 2 numbers you can times to get 2, and when you add it to get 3, will be 2 and 1, so that here will be n plus 2 over 2, and n plus 1 over 2, times this is difference of two square, so I can factorize n plus one, n minus one. Likewise, this is n plus two square, n plus two, n minus two. This can go with this. This is one, so this is same as n minus two over n plus one times n plus one, n minus one n plus 2, n minus 2, n plus 1 go with n plus 1, n minus 2 go with n minus 2, so we are left with n minus 1 over n plus 2. So this is the simplification of this. Question 13 says, in the diagram, ABT is a circle of center O, PQ is a tangent to the circle at T, and ABC is a straight line, TC bisect angle BTQ. TC bisect angle BTQ. And by bisection, it means it divides it into two equal parts. And angle BAT is 44 degrees. And angle PTA is 60 degrees. Find angle ACT. So we are looking for angle ACT. We are looking for this angle. Let's call it theta. If this bisect angle BTQ, it means if here is x, here is also x. But mind you, angle BTQ is 44 degrees because we call that angle in the alternate segment. Angle BTQ equals to 44 degrees. Reason. Angle in the alternate segment. So it means since it bisects it into two, it means x will be 44 over 2, which is 22 degrees. So this x is 22 degrees. Now, this is equal to this same thing, angle in the next segment. Angle A, B, T equals to 60 degrees angle in the alternate segment and so for me to get what theta is theta plus 22 should give me the 60 exterior angle of a triangle is equals to the sum of the two opposite interior angle so theta plus 22 must give me 60 degree exterior angle of a triangle equals sum of the two opposite interior angle and so that theta will now be 60 minus 22 which will be 38 degrees b says the circumference of the base of a cylindrical tank is 11 meters the height of the tank is 3 meters more than 6 times the radius. The height of the tank is 3 meters more than 6 times the radius. Calculate the radius. Now, first of all, circumference is giving us 2 pi r, And we are told that the circumference is 11. 2 times 22 over 7 times r. 11 can go to the 2 2 times so that we have arrow to be 7 over 4 or 1.75 how do we find the height we know that the height is 3 meter more than 6 times the radius so height is 6 radius plus 3 
which is 6, 7 over 4, plus 3. 2 here is 2, 2 here is 3. 3 times 7 is 21. 21 over 2 is 10.5 plus 3, which is 13.5 meters. Finally, the volume of the tank. Volume of a cylindrical tank is pi r square h. Pi is 22 over 7. Radius is 7 over 4 times 7 over 4. And height is 13.5. 7 can cancel 7. 2 here is 2. 2 here is 11. So if we multiply this, we will get 129.93. So approximately 130 meter cube. Thank you for watching. Make sure you consider subscribing, liking this video, share it. See you in the next video. Bye.